Paris President's remarks and report. Mr. Jewell. Thank you, Chairman. Um, first, we'll start off with last week's severe weather recap. Um, again, when we were going into that event, um, we were told that we should probably receive about one to two inches of rain, that it would move through very quickly. Um, we quickly found out that once um, this weather got on top of us, it started training. Um, and we saw anywhere from six to seven inches of rain um, uh, across the parish. Uh, I think Walker uh, pump station recording the highest, which is in St. Rose, at seven inches. Um, Doppler radar said we got eight. Um, none of our stations have showed that. Um, and then, obviously, uh, the National Weather Service sometimes uses the airport's um, weather gauge uh, to, to tell us how much we got in St. Charles Parish. But as you know, that isn't always accurate being so far away from us. Um, while it was about a five hour um, event from when the rain kind of started and then slacked off to when it started again, uh, we received most of that rain uh, within about a two hour period uh, of time during the parish um, from about 10 to 12 and then it started tapering off after that. To put that into perspective, um, when you look at the 98 or so square miles of interior drainage that we have, the entire parish is 411 square miles total. If you look at everything inside of our boundaries, much of that is wetlands. Um, but if you look at the, the 90 to 100 interior drainage um, square miles that we have, that's roughly 9 to 10 billion gallons of water uh, that fell. That's around 16,000 uh, or 17,000 Olympic-sized swimming pools. Um, and we did convert that to Superdomes because people obviously connect with Superdomes. It was close to 10 Superdomes of water. Um, and when you take our pumping capacity, which is right around 19,000 and change total across the parish, it'll take you about 20 hours to, to pump all of that out, uh, in which it did take that long because we were pumping well into the next day. Um, but although we experienced significant street flooding across the entire parish in pretty much every neighborhood, um, I'm relieved to say that we didn't have any widespread flooding. And when I say widespread flooding, I mean like taking a neighborhood and having streets flooding. Um, we did receive reports of people pushing water into homes. That's why we yell and scream so much about, um, about not driving on flooded roads. Uh, there just wasn't enough barricades to put out on that day for all the roads that were flooded. Um, I know we had some residents who actually parked their own cars across the street to prevent people from driving down, and I can't say I blame them when the alternative is potentially pushing water into their home. Um, um, that being said, there was people. There were people who had garages flooded. There were people who had garages converted into rooms uh, on their homes that received a little bit of water, but. Nothing, uh, nothing massive like we like we saw in in 2020 and um, 2021. Um, but I believe that the the difference maker in events like this are our first responders, our our employees, the sheriff's office, the fire department, who works to help block streets. Who they tend to parish catch basins, ditches, canals, and our pump stations. And when all your pumps are running, you have issues that pop up. And we, we saw them over and over again. And um, again, our, our crews did a great job. Uh, and what made this difficult um, in, this rain, in, in this rain event was that, um, you know, normally in, in the rain events we've had, we've had rain across the parish, but you have pockets of rain where, you know, Bob, we've talked about this, where months just gets hammered and everybody else gets an inch or a half an inch. Um, this was really across the whole parish. So our crews did have to spread out and tend to every part of the parish. Um, and it's, it was days like that where it's a stark reminder, you know, after we had a drought the previous year and, um, and, and we were very fortunate with having very little rain events, uh, that we still have projects underway and that we have to continue pushing projects forward and we have to continue making improvements to the drainage system and that we are committed to doing. Um, you can see here on the slides, we had a couple of um, folks send in pictures. That was uh, Monsanto. Uh, Avenue and Luling on the left, or Monsanto and, and Luling, and then on the right is the the Cooley at at the at Thoroughbred in Munts. So um, many canals out of its banks. When you see um, when you see levels like that uh, in 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 Mimosa, that means Primrose Canal is about at that same level. 
Um, same thing with the Cooley, same thing in Destrehan when I went out there um, during the rain, the canal was out of its banks. Um, so um, again, stark reminder, you got to keep pushing forward and we're going to, uh, we're going to continue to do that. Again, I'm thankful for the employees for everything they've done and I'm thankful for the hundreds and hundreds of culverts that we have replaced and, and miles of, uh, of drainage that we've maintained, uh, which I think is also part of the difference maker uh, in this. I want to show you some uh, sewer because um, we always talk about I and I, but like, what does that look like? So you can see on 410 at the Hawnville treatment plant, we treated 1.8 million gallons per day. And then you see on 411 that jumps to 7.4 million gallons per day. So that shows you um, the amount of, of water uh, that got into the sewer system. It wasn't just uh, that people use the bathroom more. That was literally pumping water that got into the sewer system. That's why you might have been called about a, a sewer backup onto a yard uh, or an issue at a lift station. That might have been why you saw uh, flashing red lights at a lot of our lift stations. It's because we have high water. So you can see both the influent and the effluent side there. So 2 million on the effluent on the first day, 7 million on the second. Same thing with the Luling Pond, 1.6 on the day of the event. The next day you had 8.5. Um, 0.492 million gallons on the day of the rain, 3 million on the next day, and then Destrehan, 2.6, and then you jump to 9.5. Um, same thing on the effluent side, 2.9, and then over 10 million gallons uh, of effluent that day. So um, once again, shows you that uh, you still have, we still have more work to do lining the pipe. Again, when we get into a situation like that where you have literally just um, water that has sheet flowed across the entire area and a and an area has become a lake it's almost impossible to keep it out of the um, the, the res out of the sewer system um, but we've done a good bit of pipelining which we know has helped uh, in smaller events and even though not all of our generators are completely hooked up meaning that we do not have all of our automated transfer switches in yet um, the generators were used at our at our big lift stations which significantly helped our wastewater crews during that event. During that event, uh, remember we put generators on all of our large booster and lift stations. Um, which, um, if you go to try to pump them out with a pumper truck, it doesn't really do much. Uh, but having those pumps running there was was good. We should have all of those um, transfer stations done within the next three months. Uh, we are doing those in house. Our electrical crews uh, are able to, to handle that. Okay, last week planning and zoning also sent out approximately 100 notices regarding temporary housing registrations of RV units. Um, residents of these units were notified that they have 30 days to disconnect utilities and move the unit uh, into a storage location, meaning basically behind the front wall of the home. Um, planning and zoning staff is taking information down for residents who still need housing options following the end of the allowance. We do know a lot of folks are still working with the Restore Act, uh, or, or rest, uh, the Project Restore, um, but we will be coming up on the third anniversary of Hurricane Ida, and there are still a lot of people who have not even attempted to, um, to get back in their homes, and a couple who, quite frankly, um, don't look like they have any plan to. So um, working with them, I can tell you that the state is doing the exact same thing. FEMA is working on the exact same thing, working to get people out of the trailers um, and, and close out these cases. And um, if y'all have any questions, Michael Albert uh, can help assist um, with, with those. Um, Trash Bash is Saturday. Again, this is the 16th annual Trash Bash. We have, um, uh, I think, over 700 people who are registered this year. Last year, we had about 350, so we've doubled. Um, this year, we're partnering with Keep Louisiana Beautiful and Love the Boot Week. So we're excited for another celebration at the community center. This is one of those deals. We hope it gets bigger than, you know, the Alligator Festival or Jazz Fest. And we hope to, you know, keep keep people interested in keeping our, our, our parish uh, clean. I hope we one day we can say we have 53,000 participants, and I think we can get the parish cleaned up real good um, if everybody just does a bag of trash. Um, next, uh, before we go into the ribbon cutting, I just want to mention, too, that this week is St. Charles Parish Day at the Capitol. Um, everyone is invited. It's at the Louisiana State Capitol, Alario House Patio. That's the house side patio. 
Um, we are going to have uh, food from various local restaurants. Uh, we have sponsors from Dow, Shell, the TJC Group, Valero, Lapis, Bungie, and IMTT, plus more. Um, and uh, we are excited to showcase uh, St. Charles Parish to our legislators. Um, when, when they are up there making laws, we want them to remember St. Charles Parish. We want them to remember, um, you know, all the, all the benefit that we provide, not only um, here locally, but to the state and to the nation. Uh, again, that's on, on Wednesday, April 17th, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, parking is limited, so I do recommend you carpool if you can, um, and we hope to see you there. All right, next, second floor ribbon cutting. The renovations to our judges' uh, chambers and district attorney's office, as well as bonds and fine, are finally complete. So we will, we will celebrate with a ribbon cutting on Monday, April 22nd at 3 p.m. I hope that you all can make it. I can tell you that this one was very hard to coordinate between all of our council members, our judges, um, all of our uh, higher court judges as well. Um, but we did find a date Monday again, April 22nd at 3 p.m. I want to thank Bob Messerly and the government buildings team uh, for their hard work putting the final touches on the second floor um, before we welcome our visitors to celebrate with us. Um, next, we have the West Bank Bridge Park ribbon cutting. Another exciting event happening next week. It's going to be a busy week. Um, is the official ribbon cutting for the phase one improvements of the West Bank Bridge Park. So if you can join us, it'll be Thursday, April 25th at 4.30 p.m. in front of Field 1 to celebrate this milestone and to see the improvements for yourself. Come and see our two synthetic turf fields, grass outfields, backstops, uh, and dugouts, plus the addition of four pickleball courts and uh, the revamping of our two tennis ball courts surrounded by beautiful modern fencing and LED lighting. And last but certainly not least, our annuals, our annual rabies vaccination drive um, is coming up on April 28th at 9 a.m. until noon. That's going to be at the West Bank Trailhead. So across from the West Bank Bridge Park, it's on the levee side, as well as the East Bank Bridge Park. Dogs must be on a leash and cats must be in a carrier. The cost is $10 per animal, cash only. This event is, again, for dogs and cats, which must have annual rabies vaccinations um, per Section 4-40 of the St. Charles Parish Code of Ordinance. That completes my report.